here to weigh in is the man of the hour. Uh, he's the chairman of the Senate Judiciary Committee. He's been front and center through this entire process, uh, Chuck Grassley. Uh, Senator, uh, first off, today, we're expected to have the vote at about 11 o'clock. Do you know already how it's going to go? Uh, our leader said yesterday this is one of the few times in the United States Senate we won't know how it's going to go until everybody's cast their vote. Senator, uh, oh, sorry, go ahead. So, so we don't, as of now, I don't really know, and I don't know whether anybody else does. So, Senator, are you talking about the final vote or the cloture vote? Because the cloture uh, vote, will, will that likely pass? Because that's not the final vote, and yeah. then the one that's up for grabs is the, is the big uh, one. I think you're going to find both votes about the same for hmm. everybody. Senator, how do we not know how Jeff Flake and Susan Collins, Murkowski and Manchin are going to vote? I know that um, I, don't, I just don't understand why they're not saying are they just waiting to the very end because they don't want to be swayed by their voters. But what's what more information do they need? We've already got the FBI report. Why don't we know how they're going to vote? Uh, because they're very personal, very quiet about it. And I think that they uh, they want uh, legitimately. I found myself in the same position. You want to make sure before you make a final decision, you want your constituents to know that you're very thoughtful about it and what might come up new, uh, they're going to wait till the last minute. I've been in that same position, so I'm not going to hold it against them for not announcing ahead of time. Yeah, so we'll see where that goes. Uh, McCaskey wants to go back and see more. She want, didn't feel as though she had enough time, and so does Manchin, I think. Uh, when you look at this, the Democrats are lined up almost in unison outside Manchin and saying that this is a sham. Uh, Menendez uses an expletive saying it's all BS, despite the thousand pages and the multiple uh, interviews. Are you surprised that the people that demanded one week for an evaluation last week are saying it's not enough this week? Not only that, but uh, during our last hearing, they said we, we, we ought to be having the FBI look at one person, only one person. They ended up looking at about 12 people, but they needed to look at this guy that his last name is Judge. Uh, they went way beyond that. They aren't satisfied. They're always moving the goalposts. But I think you've got to go back to July the 10th when Schumer said he's going to do anything under the sun to defeat this nomination. Uh, I've been trying to have a fair and thorough and open hearing, and I think we have done exactly that uh, to get everything out on the table. Uh, and, uh, and I've been dealing with a demolition derby on the part of the uh, Democrats uh, where they've been out to do everything mm -hmm. they can to defeat him. And one of the things you would think that they'd be concentrating on is he qualified to be on the court uh, 12 years on the D.C. Uh, circuit court. Uh, 307 uh, decisions. What is there about this person that he shouldn't be on the Supreme Court? No, his qualifications have not been at issue. Everything that's yeah. been at issue is secondary things. Senator, what do you think about these protesters that are attacking your colleagues in elevators? You have Orrin Hatch and Jeff Flake. Yeah, uh, I think that uh, it's a reflection of the uh, incivility of American society generally. Uh, and I think it's also uh, evidence that, uh, that uh, people will go to any length when they're encouraged by people on Capitol Hill, like uh, one uh, congresswoman saying, uh, confront them in the restaurants, mm -hmm. go up and another senator saying, get in their face. We as senators ought to be setting examples for civility, not encouraging incivility. You've heard about the resistance since uh, November 2016. You're seeing the resistance headquarters right here on Capitol Hill, all among Democrats. Would any of your Democratic colleagues admit that? Any privately, do you say, we've gone too far, the heat is up too high, this never happened to Elena Kagan and Sonia Sotomayor in the, high, in the hallways. What is it about this moment and the folks on the left that's allowing this to happen? Well, uh, don't forget, there are some people on the right that get uh, overly uh, a ambitious and, and uh, vicious as well. Uh, we here on Capitol Hill have to set an example for civility. Right. Senator, uh, Chairman, we understand that Leland Kaiser, the former friend of Dr. Ford, feels pres felt pressure to revisit her denial and uh, of knowing about the alleged assault back in 10th grade. 
How do you feel about her saying that she feels pressured by Democrats to change her story? There is evidence. I can't speak about it because it's in the FBI report, but there's evidence about other people that have been questioned that they were led into it as well. So this is another example of headquarters for the resistance being right here on Capitol Hill. Hmm. And, and you do believe that there's a problem with the Deborah, uh, Dr. Ford's collaboration with the Democratic Party. What paperwork do you want to see that you yeah. haven't seen yet? What do you need uh, to see in terms of the communication? Polygraph, other things that, that she talked about to the Washington Post. If she can talk to the Washington Post about it, she ought to talk to us. But let's get back to the legitimacy of Ford coming forward. If she was, she was assaulted, I believe she was assaulted. Uh, there's no corroboration that uh, about her uh, judgment that it was uh, Judge Kavanaugh. But uh, you got to take sexual assault uh, accusations very seriously. We don't do that enough in American society. And this, uh, uh, whether Ford is right about Judge Kavanaugh or not, the fact that we had a forum before my committee bringing to the people's attention the major social problem we have about so sexual assault and we don't talk about it, uh, that uh, is at least one good accomplished by S Dr. Ford coming forward, even though uh, she wanted anonymity and even though Senator Feinstein uh, or other Democrats on the committee uh, didn't protect mm -hmm. her. Absolutely. Uh, her confidentiality. Yeah, confidential. thank you for taking that seriously, Senator. Senator Grassley. Well, good luck thank today. Appreciate your time. Thank yeah. you. Thank, well, thank you so you. much. And many people are praising Chairman Grassley on both sides the way they handled this entire mm -hmm. thing. Meanwhile,